Hi folks and thanks for joining me. Let's take a quick look here at the front end of the uh, receiver that I have highlighted here. You can see the uh, loop antenna and then the associated uh, tuning condenser or tuning capacitor. And again the loop antenna itself is nothing more than the antenna coil. So just keep that in mind. And this forms a uh, tank circuit. So it's just an inductor slash coil in parallel with a capacitor slash condenser. So let me demonstrate something here. We're going to test how well the uh, loop antenna for this particular radio matches up with the tuning condenser itself out of circuit using nothing more than the signal generator in my oscilloscope. And uh, we'll just see if we can tune through the band and I'll demonstrate how that works. And then we'll take a look real quick making some uh, Q or quality factor measurements and uh, see if we can estimate. Again, it'll be an estimation of the quality factor of the uh, particular inductor, that being the loop antenna, across the uh, spectrum from 540 up to uh, 1600 kilocycles. So let's start out here just looking at the uh, tuning mechanism. I threw the uh, tuning knob back on here for reference and you can see I've got the uh, tuning condenser or capacitor here set up to about 1600 uh, kilocycles. Now keep in mind that the uh, tuning condenser or capacitor here is fully open and I'll show that in the back here with a picture in picture. So that means we're going to tune to the highest frequency. And again, if I were to close the uh, tuning condenser here, that would be considered uh, fully meshed. You'll see that called out a lot, many times in the schematic itself. And that means that would be maximum capacitance, and that would tune to the uh, lowest frequency, as you can see here on the uh, dial. You can see I've got my probe attached to uh, pin number 8, which would be the grid of the 12 SA7, again that being the uh, first detector oscillator or mixer tube. And the other side there going to ground, I'm just using my uh, common uh, 10x probe, and that would give me about uh, 10 mega ohms or so, about 10 to 15 picofarad of capacitance. And again, my setup, I'm going to have stray capacitance anyway, so uh, the results won't be uh, perfect, but this will give us a general indication that the tuning condenser and the uh, loop antenna back here is a good match. Uh, someone could substitute a 100X, which would be a 100 mega ohm probe with only uh, probably two or three picofarad of capacitance for uh, better accuracy if that was important. Here's my setup from the uh, signal generator itself. You can see there's no connection uh, ground-wise. That's just floating in close proximity to the uh, loop antenna. And you can see the uh, positive connection here coming from the signal generator is actually not attached to the loop per se. It's uh, just attached here to the uh, outer conductor itself. So it's not making a uh, physical connection to the actual uh, loop itself. All right, if you're looking here at the oscilloscope, you'll see the uh, frequency itself. I'm just shy of 1600 kilocycles. And I had already mentioned just due to uh, stray capacitance, I would not be able to get exact, but that gives an indication now based on my uh, signal input here that uh, I'm able to uh, tune very near the uh, top end of the band. Again, my uh, selection process on the radio itself, I've got the tuning condenser set to uh, 1600 kilocycles. And if I vary the uh, signal generator here, you can see how the amplitude drops off. So you can see that the tank circuit is working as it should, and it's resonating let me uh, flip over to uh, 540 kilocycles. Change the uh, tuning condenser here on the radio. And you can see here where we're peaking. Increase the amplitude here just a little bit on the carrier. 
So it's showing around 523, so I'm just under the uh, 540 kilocycles. Now again, if I uh, rock the dial back and forth here on the uh, receiver itself, you can see how it uh, quickly changes. So it's just a quick and easy, simple way to uh, confirm that the antenna coil, that being the uh, loop antenna for this particular receiver, is a, a good match for the uh, tuning condenser itself here. So we should be able to track just fine across that 540 to uh, 1600 plus or minus a bit. Now, if we didn't have the uh, loop antenna, one thing to keep in mind, we wouldn't get uh, very good reception at all. Probably pick up some strong stations at best with a lot of distortion. So anyone has an All-American 5 radio similar to this, it has the uh, built-in uh, loop antenna. It needs to uh, match inductance-wise to tie back into the uh, capacitor for uh, optimal performance, of course. All right, let's take a quick look at the uh, quality factor or some of the Q measurements that I made. So here's my setup for quality factor. Again, a uh, simplistic way and uh, not extremely accurate, but it would still give us some indication of how well the uh, tank circuit uh, performs with the uh, air capacitor or condenser and the loop antenna. So you can see I've got my uh, signal generator still hooked up. It's tuned to uh, 600 kilocycles and it's uh, attached just like it was in the previous method. Here you can see I've got my uh, O-scope hooked up reading the uh, frequency. I'm just using the O-scope frequency counter in this case just to identify uh, 600 uh, kilocycles. You can see the radio is uh, tuned to 600, and then you notice I've got this small circuit built here. This is nothing more than an RF probe. I'll share the uh, schematic here. I'm just taking the uh, RF signal and uh, converting it back to uh, DC, so I can just measure that directly on my meter. So what I'll do is just take the peak of the uh, level reading that you see here, multiply that times 0.707 that will be uh, the minus 3 dB point which is uh, reduced power of one half of either sideband so what I want to do is just rock the uh, signal generator to the right to the left and uh, take note of the uh, point 707 point of the max reading. Then I'll show you the formula here for uh, just taking those uh, three readings and calculating the Q and at the same time we can calculate the uh, bandwidth as well. Again, it'll just kind of give you a ballpark figure. And you'll see here I've thrown everything into a, uh, an Excel spreadsheet. And if you look at the Excel spreadsheet here you can see how the, uh, the bandwidth measurements that I was able to uh, read here is more narrow at the lower part of the spectrum. And of course, as we go higher in frequency, you can see the uh, Q is less and the bandwidth increases. So what that means, again, is we uh, would listen to uh, distant stations or even local stations that have uh, very little separation. Knowing here in the States, everything is separated by uh, uh, 10 kilohertz. But uh, we may have some uh, you know, problems with stations on top of each other just due to the bandwidth itself of the uh, receiver front end. So maybe we'll play around with a, a different loop antenna. Maybe I'll substitute a, a ferrite antenna and uh, we'll see how well maybe it performs and do some repeat uh, Q measurements and bandwidth and see if that can improve the uh, selectivity of the uh, receiver. Folks, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Till my next uh, video, take care, stay well.